talk about the defense, Kenny, and how well they played. Unbelievable. Defense battled. They attacked. They played aggressive. Played the, they played way better uh, than enough to win the football game versus uh, that offense. Unbelievable job by Coach Ward. Unbelievable job by that entire staff. Unbelievable job by our players competing and fighting our corners, taking those guys outside one-on-one -on -one and, ch and on base downs and challenging them. Uh, playing aggressive, playing cover zero on early downs. All right, loved how our defense played. Unbelievable performance by them. You had, you had missed the, the one field goal, another one blocked. Were those factors in the decision to go for it? You know, talking about the pick six. Yeah, we were down two linemen, and we went in saying if we lost two more linemen, we couldn't kick field goals. So one lineman was risky. We knew it. So when we kicked the one field goal, uh, getting into the depth of the O-line, uh, we were a little concerned, and then that one got blocked. Uh, and then we lost another alignment. Cade was out for a little while, so it was a no go that we couldn't we couldn't kick it. Uh, so it was 100% a go. And uh, you know it's a motion play. We know they're going to play man. We know they're going to spin the back end. So we're trying to motion the guy across, get him to spin the back end, get the guy to go over top, and then bang it back underneath. Uh, you know it was loud in there. Credit to their stadium, it was loud. We snapped the ball. Uh, you know, the indicator in the snap was way too late, so it got the guy almost outside of the rub runner pre-snap. So pretty much it's a it's a horrible play at that point. You're just running a delayed in route versus catch man, right? We're trying to get the guy to go out, get the guy to go over top, and then bring him back in. We got exactly what we wanted. But, you know, we're, I just said it on the radio, but right now we're trying to find different ways to lose football games. Playing good enough, we're playing good enough football to win. Uh, we're just finding different ways to lose. And that was another way we found to lose tonight, and it's really, really unfortunate. What about the rest of the offensive performance when Washington turned the ball over four times? Yeah, I mean, I thought we moved the ball, to be honest. Uh, you know, we only had two three and outs versus a pretty good defense. I think 350 yards, not ideal. But, you know, where we are personnel-wise, I thought we ran the ball well. It was a positive. I thought some of the, the misdirections runs were good. I thought getting to Carlos back was good for Scat as a good mix-up. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we didn't win. We knew if they lined up and played man that we were going to have chance at 50-50 balls to get those explosive plays, and we just didn't have those. We didn't get those wins. So I got to find better ways to get our guys opportunities to get the ball downfield because I think we only had two explosive passes, maybe one explosive pass in the football game. Could have could have been a walk off, but I, we got to get more explosive passes. I got to do a better job um, mix, mixing that in. But I thought our O line played pretty well. It seemed like you did what you needed to do as far as keeping the ball, the time of possession was heavily in your favor. To do it. And you got the takeaways on defense, so you, it seemed like the formula was there to win this game. Yeah, the formula was there. That was the formula we wanted. We wanted to keep the ball. We wanted to run the football. We wanted to run perimeter runs. We wanted to throw a really quick passing game and not take negatives, which we did throughout the game. We wanted to use that to keep possession of the ball. Uh, the difference is we missed two field goals, right? If you have 13 points there at the end, it's a different football game. Uh, we didn't convert on two of the fourth downs in the plus territory because we weren't making field goals when we were aggressive on them. Both of those would have been field goal scenarios. Jalen Conyers earlier would have been a field goal scenario as well. We would have kicked both of those, but we just weren't in a personnel position uh, to kick those, to be honest. And I wasn't going to go put somebody out there uh, that, you know, is going to struggle in that scenario. I'm going to play to try to win it. So those two plays in the game, those two fourth downs, uh, and then missing two field goals, that's four times you get inside enemy territory inside the 25-yard line and have zero points. I mean, even if you kick four field goals in that scenario, you have 12 more points and you win the football game. So we got to clean up and get more consistent on field goal. We got to, I don't know if there's big bodies at ASU who just go there that want to play field goal for us. If you weigh 330 pounds, and I mean it, like, reach out to our team, 320 pounds, reach out to our team, because we need big bodies to put in there on field goal, and we're down a lot of them. And that's going to come back to bite us if we, you know, have to play without, you know, a, a successful field goal unit. Uh, so that was those scenarios. What were the ingredients that, that led to that defensive performance being what it was? We work. I mean, we work and we believe. Uh, I say it all the time, people probably think I'm a little crazy, like, we take the field. Every time I take the field, do anything competitive, I expect to win. And, and people will, do you really expect to win or do you hope? No, no, I expect to win. Like, I hate losing. This is so frustrating because we could have won the last four football games. Our guys are playing solid to good football. 
we're finding different ways to lose, and I got to remove that. We can't we can't keep losing games in different ways. We eventually got to get over the hump. We eventually got to make a play. We eventually got to catch that fourth down. We eventually got to send a perfect motion versus the look, and the safety goes over top and bang it for a first down. We eventually got to make those plays in those critical moments of the football game, and I got to do a better job training those moments because right now, like I said, it's a bingo card for how are we going to lose even though we're playing winning football, which is very upsetting. But I will say this. I'm so proud of our guys. Our guys are battling. We're 1-6. and six. Our guys are competing their butt off. We couldn't go to a bowl game preseason. Nobody cares about us. And our guys are showing up to work every day. They're competing every day. They're in that locker room hugging each other, saying we're going back to work. We're building the right culture here. We can see how close we are in year one through all of this, all the, all the banged up, all the negative, we're this close. We're this close to not just being a solid team. We're this close to being the number five team in the country. We're this close to beating USC. We're this close to being good football teams. This close. So we're going in the right direction. Would I like it to happen faster? Yes. I'd like it to happen much faster. But you know what? You can't control the time of when it's going to flip. But when we learn how to win, we're going to be a really, really dangerous football team. Thought process on taking the um, delays on the, the one field goal and the PAT? Yeah, well, we were trying to get them to jump. They were really, really aggressive versus Oregon. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of false cadence in the game just because those guys were getting off on the ball. So the difference in a 25 yard field goal and a 30 yard field goal is like 2% statistically on making it. So I was willing to take the risk of trying to get them to jump, get a free first down, or throw the fade in response to that, and the same thing with the extra point. So it was really just we're so aggressive on fourth downs to begin with. Maybe we could get a team to jump off sides. They did a good job not, but I also think we prevented their ends from getting off the ball, which was a huge key to the game for us because we mixed up the cadence so much. And I thought our guys handled the noise really well until fourth down and three yards to go. It was the only time that our motions were wrong with timing in the entire game. And that's upsetting. Do you have any thoughts about some of the penalties? You had the, the one that, that didn't go O'Meary's way in the end zone, and then the one that was the, that fade that they picked up. The, the, the yeah, uh, you know, they threw it from the, the back ref, the back judge, uh, threw it and said he grabbed him, and the side judge on our side said there was no restriction, so he overruled it. Uh, you know, I, th I actually thought the officials did a really nice job in the game, to be honest. Uh, you know, they communicated well. I thought they had really good reasoning when they picked up flags. I thought they had really good reasoning throughout the game. You know, I thought there was a, a Troy O'Meary home run post earlier that he got grabbed a little bit, but that's going to happen throughout the football game. But I thought they did a really nice job, to be honest. Coach, what do you have to say about Shamari Simmons' performance tonight? Oh, he's a battler, man. we got guys that are fighting. I think that's the, that's the moral of who we are is we're going to fight. Like that's, We're going to go to practice. We're going to compete. We're going to fly around, we're going to have energy, and we're going to come out here and expect to win. And when you expect to win and you're a competitor, you're going to compete at the highest level every single slap, every single snap. And like I told the guys all week, it's moments. It's 80 moments in the game that you got to make. 90 moments. Win your moment. And our defense won a lot of moments on offense. We had a lot of moments that we made, a lot of moments that we busted, a lot of moments that we just – didn't make in the critical moments. And uh, that starts with me. I mean, I, I am calling the plays for a reason because it's my, it's me, it's on me. Every, every lack of success this offense has is my fault, 100%. There's nobody else to blame. There's no player to blame. There's no other coach to blame. It's 100% on me, and I got to get it fixed. And I'm a big boy, right? That's why I took it over is because I knew we were in a challenging situation, and uh, it's – comes on me, falls back on me. So I got to do a better job. Players are completing, players are playing hard. I got to get more out of them. Obviously moral victories kind of suck, but the way this team is playing so hard, it seems like that that's evidence that they are still buying in despite how hard these losses have been. Oh yeah, the buy-in isn't a question. Come out, to, I mean, you guys come out to a practice. The buy-in isn't a question. The, uh, the will to compete of this team isn't a question. The will to go back to work on Monday isn't a question, right? Finding a way to win, that's what we got to figure out. But the, the culture that we're instilling here is the right culture. 
the fight that we're instilling here is the right fight. We can see it. You'd have to be blind to not see it. I mean, if, if it was all about wins and losses right now, right, this would be horrible. But it's about the growth. And when our guys battle the way they battled, when they compete the way they compete, there's a lot of things we got to get better at. But, man, I'm so proud of this team, I'm proud of how we're battling, proud of how we're competing. And uh, like I told them in the locker room, we can win every game on our schedule. Let's go back to work next week. Let's go home. And let's get a W. Immediately after the interception, was there a moment to regroup with Trenton or some of the guys on offense to just try to get back on track? There was. I mean, that's hard. You know, the next drive, you look what happened. Uh, you know, two two mistakes on the next drive showed up just because, you know, we kind of lost our focus there. So I got to do a better job getting those guys back, back calm after a scenario after a scenario like that but that's a big emotional swing you know that that takes a very very veteran led team to be honest a very 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 deep culture to respond at a really high level after something like that and uh, I got to go over there more and I got to be more involved culturally uh, you know in that moment to try to get those guys back and really give them a plan for what the next drive was uh, so we could go and, and respond, which we didn't on that second drive, or that drive after it. Coach, we talked about the defense and stuff, but what can you say about kind of the guys who had to shuffle in? Alfonso Taylor came in. Um, what's another name? Elijah O'Neal came in after Clayton kind of took another targeting penalty. What can you speak about kind of that next up man up mentality that you guys have continuously had to ha have this season? Yeah, our defense, I mean, those guys were ready, ready to play. Kudos to our defensive staff for, for getting everybody in the depth ready to play. Uh, you know, Elijah O'Neal, it's funny you mention him. You know, I really I kind of called him out the other day for just doing the little things right. You know, he's got to do the little things right. Show up early. Don't be the last one somewhere. Show up early. And really challenged him. And this week, he was 10 minutes early to everything we did. Uh, he was one of the first people out to practice. He was dialed in. So it's kind of fitting that you mention him because it just shows that he you know, was a kid who made a drastic change in how he prepared. And for him to go and have that success on game day, hopefully, I mean, that's good with three years left. Hopefully that shows him, man, if I just do it this way, if I just do it the right way, right, I'm going to be ready when my number's called on game day.